Hello, my people. Welcome back to CP Radio. I'm here with my boy, Anthony. Yo, what's up, Frank? And uh, we have two special guests here today. Let me just uh, intro- let them introduce themselves. What's up? This is Zach Hempsey. Yeah, this He's is Zach Hempsey. This is A. Maldonado. What's up, people? How you doing? All right, so, well, this is our first actual uh, interview on the show, so shout out to that. Uh <laughs> Um, so yeah, we, I, I'm gonna start off with some questions for you because on the show, my friend. Honestly, it's, this is your show. Yeah, oh. honestly, it's a, it's a pleasure, man. Like, I, I I just got into music and it's it's very different than what what I've been listening to lately. Mm. So I, I I really respect you just coming over here. I, I really Much appreciate it. Thank you for the you invitation. Too. You too. Thank you for coming. So good. I'm just here to watch. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what made you want to compose music? I don't know. It's just sort of uh, drawn to it for whatever reason. You know, um, why does one do anything? You know, um, I was just drawn to it. I kept, I, I never, I got into it not with the intention of doing it professionally or as a living. I just got into it to do it and then kept doing it, got better and better at it over time. And before I know it, here I am, you know. So, did you always have a love for music? I mean, as far as back I can remember, yeah. Um, yeah, there's something about music. It's just, it's hypnotic. It's, yeah. it's like a siren. You know what I mean? Yeah. For whatever reason. Nah, definitely, definitely. I respect that. So, what music actually, what music actually inspired you to make your your projects? Like, for example, um, the way. Like, did mm-hmm. anything inspire you? Any specific artists? Any songs that you may, may have listened to? Nah, not really. Um, I find that um, I don't know if you. It's sort of the if you you could break down your question and really say where does inspiration come from, and it's it's a vague abstract thing that you can't really pin down and there's rarely ever one source it's rarely it's rarely that a inspired me to do b usually it's a whole bunch of things that all coalesce and come together and and instill this feeling that you need to make something so for me i think that there are certainly music inspires me but there's no one specific song or one specific artist that has ever uh, that i've ever listened to that said man now i need to go make this specific song so there's no like direct ties but um, I think it's I, I think I'm inspired less by specific songs or artists and more by um, emotions and events and um, authentic expression and whatever the art form is, whether that's music or film or anything. So, so in a way, you could say like you, you're your own artist, then. Like absolutely. I mean, that's how I that's how I think of it. I don't know how other people think of it. Yeah. Inspiration. <laughs> If yeah. I could, if I could fill in the blank. So I remember you telling me that you took a break between the way and Nomad, and I'm sorry, Ronin and Nomad. Yeah, those two years. Separation. What was that break for? You said you were kind of like seeking that inspiration. What was that break, and how did that inspire you yeah. to, to well, get reinvigorated to make the Nomad? Yeah. All right. So I would say that for me, it's not an intellectual choice to make music. It's not. I mean, there it is in the sense that you're you are deciding to sit down and try to do whatever, but. Ultimately, I'm not, I'm not intellectually saying I'm going to make this kind of song. Or I'm going to do this, this or that. It's it's uh, it's more intuitive. It's more of a compulsion, mm-hmm. and that compulsion is either there or it's not there, you know. And you don't really have control over when you feel compelled to make music and when you don't. So for me, after a- after every album, this happens to me where I, I finish an album and then I feel like the well is dry. You know what I mean? Like there's just nothing, there's nothing there to tap into and you got to wait for it to refill, Mm -hmm. if you will. And uh, depending on the, where I was at the time, like that period of time for the well to refill can last different lengths of time. And after Ronin, it it took a while, seemingly to me, at least it it took a while where I was like, man, maybe, maybe it's never going to fill again. Maybe that was the last album. Then Um, there's no (laughs) man. Yeah. And then, and then eventually all of a sudden I I think, I think I've said everything I have to Mm -hmm. say. Like in the case of After Ronin, I thought I said it, I, you know, there's nothing left for me to say. Mm-hmm. And uh, before I know it, all of a sudden, I'm starting to feel compelled, like, no, there's something more. I can't quite, I can't quite pinpoint what that more is, but I feel it. And so then I, then I, then I, I follow that thread. I, and, and eventually, now I'm making Nomad. I finished mm-hmm. Nomad, and here I am again. I just finished Nomad, came out uh, about a month ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I'm sitting here going... Maybe I don't know if I have anything else left to say. Maybe that was the last album. I have no idea. You know, hopefully not. Hopefully time will not. time will tell. Yeah. You know. So um, 
there was a since there was a three year like separation. Was there any things that you were doing between those three years that that you were like maybe trying to be inspired, tr- trying to you know get that that well to be filled up again? Um, okay, so the three the three years in between the release of actually I guess it was three and a half years between the release of Ronin and the release of Nomad. It's not the case that that entire time I was sitting no. uh, <laughs> like doing other stuff, right? Yeah. Um, there was a period, so there was a period, maybe it was six months, where I wasn't active doing music at all, right after the Ronin. Then there was maybe two or three months, no, maybe a two-month period, I think, where I had I was redoing my studio, mm-hmm. um, which took a while. Like, I had new equipment, I had to rearrange it, I had to retreat, retune the room and all that other stuff, so that took some time. But actually, m- most of the time between the two albums was on account of the fact that it took me that long to do Nomad. And so uh, it's the, I think I spent, it wasn't sequential, like every single day I began until I was done. Mm-hmm. There were pockets where I worked for a year, then wasn't doing, wasn't working for a month, then I was working for another year. Mm-hmm. Like, so it wasn't sequential A to Z kind of thing, but uh, I spent the most amount of time, if you aggregate all the time I spent on Nomad, it was more than any other album. It was about two and a half to three years that it took to get the whole thing yeah. to where I wanted from, from nothing to uh, completion. So. It's, it's a weird thing because as you the more you do something, the better you get at it, right? So you would think by the time you're on your fourth full-length album, and actually if you count before I was a solo artist, I had two albums out with Nine Leaves, mm-hmm. um, and there were probably at least two albums worth of material that never even got released. So I don't even know what that – now this is like album number eight for me or nine, really, if you count the whole thing. Mm-hmm. You would think by the time you get that far – Oh, you're just knocking them out. You're just, mm-hmm. It's just easy. It's you're just, just natural. Yeah. You're, just so, you're just so adept at what you're doing, at your craft, that it doesn't take you any time. But I'm finding, ironically enough, I'm finding the opposite. The better I get, the longer I take. And I think the reason is because the better you get, the, m- the, m- the more options you have, the more ways there are to slice that apple. And you kind of have to slice it a lot of ways to kind of really figure out what's the best way for this song or what's the ideal way to tell uh, or communicate this concept. And so there's that. And there's also the more tools, the better you get, the more tools you have at your disposal. So not only are you better at the existing tools you always had, but you also have more tools to use. And so then it's a question of you have to like really try out, like, how am I going to build this this house? I can build it this way, that way, this way. And you kind of have to like, it's a lot of experimentation. Yeah. And also your standards go up. So as you're the where you are at the, let's say, 10 years down the line or 20 years down the line, you are hearing things that you never heard. You, you didn't have the capacity to catch things or, or um, uh, penetrate certain things, the, you know, as you, you – later on, you can, you can hear things and dissect things far better than you could – when you were starting out. And so what comes with that is there's, there's more stuff to do. There's more like, yeah, now it needs to be like this. And to the average person, you might be, uh, they might look at that and be like, yo, these are all subtleties. I can't even hear the difference when you, when you just, when you just applied that EQ Mm -hmm. on that vocal or on that whatever instrument, it was so subtle. Like, does it really matter? And it's like, the answer is, you know, one task in of itself doesn't matter. But when you add up hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of really subtle things, they amalgamate to something that's not so subtle. And, I think that plays a role as you get further in your career. You become aware of so many more things, mm-hmm. and there's so much more to do and dial in that things just take longer. So yeah. at least that's what I'm finding. No, no, that's wow, that's that's a good answer. <laughs> um, so I know that some like certain artists they they do things before they actually begin to to compose their music, like to start on projects. So there's some certain things that you do, like maybe like go to church or like. I don't know, like like watch like a some TV show maybe. Oh, you're saying you're saying that like, if I'm like, hearing you, you're saying some people have like like rituals little rituals or something yeah, to get them yeah, in yeah, the yeah, mindset. Yeah. Like, like little rituals and, and things like that. Uh, no, I don't have any yeah. rituals. It just comes to you. Well, yeah, because I mean, again, because um, I guess if I was, you still do your movements in the morning. Yeah, but I, <laughs> he's talking about martial arts. I do martial oh, arts. Do martial but, arts? Yeah, that's cool. But um, I do those not having anything to do with music though. But I will say that it does affect. It does stabilize my mood. That's for sure. Um, but I don't f- see a connection between that and, or a direct connection between that and music. But I think part of the reason too is that if I was somebody who was, um, if I was coming at this from a standpoint of X amount of years have gone by, I'm due up for an album, mm-hmm. or it's been three years, like I really need to make another album, so let me book some studio time, and we're just gonna we're gonna knock this out. <laughs> if I was coming at it like that, yeah. then maybe I would I would have uh, tricks or techniques mm-hmm. or, or little things that I would do to try to get me in the right mindset. But I don't come at it like I'm obligated to make something or that I, 
you know, have to satisfy some demand or that if fans are asking for, you know, by, before Nomad came out, people were like, hey, where you, where'd you go? Where'd you disappear? Don't leave us. Like, we want more music. It's like, mm-hmm. that's all well and good, but I can't do it for you, mm-hmm. right? I have to do it for me. Exactly. And um, because of that, it, nothing, is, nothing is premeditated. So because it's not premeditated, there's no ritual to be had anyway. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, yeah, it's yeah. either it's, it springs forth or it doesn't spring forth. And when it springs forth, I take advantage. So, I mean, all I can do is make, make, the con- make my conditions such that if um, creativity springs, I can tap into it and, and record it and pursue it wherever mm-hmm. it goes. So that means you know, having a studio. I have a studio in my house. So um, if I'm in the mood, there's nothing stopping yeah. me. I just got to walk downstairs and there I'm at, you know? So. Yeah. Yeah, so, like, even though people need to understand that it takes a lot of time to produce music like what you do, and so, like, they they can't just, like, make you wake up and say, okay, you need to get this out to us, like, right now, because you don't have that mentality of, like, I need to do this on my own time. Like, you need to find a time pocket to do it on your... That's how I come at it. I mean, um, but I think there's a difference between... This sort of gets into the difference between an artist and an entertainer, right? So... If, if you're an entertainer, then um, you don't really have the luxury of time. Mm-mm. You know what I mean? You have, you have to have certain things done in certain, within a certain time or by certain deadlines, and yeah. there's, there's set stuff that those people do. And there's no label pressuring him. He's on, he yeah, but if, I mean, if, but if you're an entertainer, then there probably is. You yeah. know what I'm, saying? Mm-hmm. I'm assuming you're a successful entertainer, then mm-hmm. chances are more than likely you have a label or a publisher or manager or you have touring obligations or whatever it is, and... There, those are that's a different kind of pressure, mm-hmm. if you will, um, and they're responding from different motivations. Whereas, from an artist standpoint, which is where I come at it from, yeah, there's no. It takes as long as it takes. Like I cannot be concerned with how much time has elapsed or how long I'm, it's taking me to finish this song or whatever. Whether that's the writing or that's the mixing. I mean, the thing that takes the longest for me is is the mixing process. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, but uh, and that's really where it's like I'm. You know, the the writing. I'm not going to say that the writing is easier. It's, they're just different tasks, and I find that the, the, the mixing is far more time-consuming. But, again, I'm also doing that single-handedly, right? So I'm mixing my own stuff. Not everybody is. So if, yeah. if, if I was an entertainer who didn't have to record and mix my own stuff, then that's going to speed up a lot of, your yeah. timeline yeah. there because that's less work for you to do. I could, just, I could just write, show up, spit my verse in the booth, and, and, and engineer can, <laughs> you know, tomorrow he'll have it mixed, you know? Yeah. That's cool, but... Um, you feel like it's better if it's like it's if it's by you. Like I, you know what it is? It's it's more that I have a certain sound that I'm chasing. Mm-hmm. It has to sound a certain way. Yeah. And growing up, I never had access to engineers anyway. So it's not I didn't have the luxury. Like mm-hmm. if I had if it was offered to me when I was beginning, maybe to this day I'd be using engineers. I don't know. Yeah. But it was never an option. So you had, you know, uh, uh, necessity is the mother of invention kind of thing. So I had to learn how to mix my own stuff and mm-hmm. then I got better and better at it and then before I know it, once I got to a point where I was very successful, yeah, technically now I, I could hire an engineer if I wanted to, mm-hmm. but I have no desire to because I know how I want it to sound. Yeah. And rather than me try to communicate that to somebody else. Um, it would be far more difficult. Yeah, I, I, can't, I really can't, you yeah. know. And, and the way a lot of engineers end up having to work when, when they're working with an artist or really an entertainer, you know, you'll, you'll see things like um, or see and or hear things where it's like, yeah, I want this record to sound like <laughs> fill in the blank. Yeah. I really like whatever – that Beyonce track. Yeah. I really want to sound like Beyonce track. Like, mm-hmm. So you're using, you're, you're having this conversation where you're comparing what you're doing to other stuff and that engineer then has to take that and, you know, they have their own intuition about how they want to approach a song but they also got to take the artist or the label or the entertainer's wishes in, into account and more often than not, everything's being compared to other stuff and then you end up chasing a sound that somebody else is. and I'm just like, again, that's not artistry for me. So I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to chase any pre-existing sound, whether my own or somebody else's. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to chase whatever the sound is supposed to be for that song or album, you know? And I don't know in advance what, how to achieve that. So there's a lot of times where, and that's the, other, that's the other irony too, is the longer you go, you figure the more confident you get, and that's true to a degree. I have a lot of confidence that I can cross the finish line. But at the same time, the feeling of being like lost in the ocean never goes away. So... If I so with Nomad, there were plenty of times where like I, maybe I finally got the the music where I wanted it, or I got the the verse and I recorded it. But now I got to make it sound good, and I'm like, man, how am I gonna how am I gonna solve this equation? Like, mm-hmm. because just because you whatever your solution to the whatever my solution was on Ronin doesn't necessarily apply to Nomad. So 
every situation, every song is a unique set of variables, unique context. And for me, I'm always trying to figure out what the solution is. I don't know what it is. I can't communicate it to somebody else what I, what I want them to do because I got to figure out what's required. And I'm not going to waste my time with you giving your vision on it because I have a vision that I'm trying to see. So, um, Yeah, because every song can't be the same. I mean, it can be if you wanted to, yeah. uh, I suppose. <laughs> you know, that would be very... Very repetitive, very boring yeah. to be hearing the same types. Like me, me and Mr. Me and Mr. F were talking about earlier. I was saying like, ask him if he if you heard your new album, and he was like, no. And he said he doesn't really want to. And it's not disrespect. He uh -huh. said it's mainly because he doesn't want to be influenced by a different voice. Like, Who was saying this? Miss F. Uh huh. Yeah, he was telling me he was like, he doesn't want to be influenced by a different voice because he wants to have, like you were saying you want to have like your own style, your own type of music. Yeah. So, like he feels like I kind of understand like yeah. I mean, I've heard people say that too, like certain like film composers or mm -hmm. whatever. Um, they won't want to listen to i i mean i've seen a, i remember a, some film composer or a tv show composer actually was saying that he doesn't want to watch other tv shows that are in the same genre as mm -hmm. the ones that he has to write music for because he doesn't want to be influenced by their scores or something like that yeah because subconsciously like you may yeah. like you may not want to but like it, it'll might it might just happen yeah everybody's human right so mm -hmm. whatever you're exposed to is going to influence you in some i mean not necessarily overtly not necessarily directly it might be indirect it might be subtle but you can't we're we're in a connected world um and when you're in a connected space you're going to be affected by everything you're, you're you're exposed to so there are people who feel like you know yeah i don't want to listen to whatever it is if it's in my lane i don't want to i don't want to hear it but um for me i don't really have that issue because i don't i have yet to encounter anything else that really is in my lane mm -hmm. so i'm in my own lane which means i don't really get influenced by anybody i'm not i'm not at risk of being taken off course or or my create my originality is not um, under threat from listening to other people's yeah. stuff. But I do feel that it is in listening to my own stuff, which is why I don't listen to my own music. <laughs> so when I finish an album, that's it. Like, I don't go back. I don't rock it in my car. Mm -hmm. I don't, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> on the way the home. Test? That's the test. I'm yeah. the, <laughs> no, 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 no. no, when you're making it. When you're making yeah, it, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. so, so when I'm making it, I'm listening to it every day, obviously. And then when, I'm, and then when it's getting mastered and I'm evaluating the mm -hmm. master, yes, it's coming in the car. I'm listening to it in the car. I'm listening to the studio. I'm listening to it on headphones. Lots of different you know, uh, places to evaluate in different rooms and conditions. You got to hear it in but, the Tesla. But once, it's, <laughs> but once it's signed off and mm -hmm. it's released and I put my stamp on it, this is, yeah. this is what it is. This is, I, you know what I mean? It has my seal of approval and it's out in the world. From that point forward, I don't go back. I am not. will not be listening to that in the car, yeah. you know? And it's not because I don't want to. I would love to, you know what I mean? Obviously, I put blood, sweat, and tears yeah. into all the stuff. You know, it's kind of like your children. It's like, yeah, I don't want to not see my kids, yeah. you know? But at the same time, uh, I have a larger agenda mm -hmm. um, and I'm always trying to find new ground every mm -hmm. time out. I'm, I'm not trying to do the same thing twice, so to speak. I'm trying to find new territory. And in my effort to find new territory, I do myself a disservice if I'm going to if I'm going to stay in the mindset of where I came before. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, definitely. Like from it's like depending on what album, like Ronin uh, and Empty Room, like do, I mean Ronin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ron, those two albums like they don't really sound alike at all yeah, and like yeah. if you look, look at artists now like J. Cole like honestly like, you know Born Sinner album and his uh, 2014 Fort, like I'm a big J. Cole fan but <laughs> I didn't respect him dropping the 2014 Forest Hills Drive album because I felt like it was the same thing you know it, was, it wasn't anything yeah. new to me so yeah well I think it, you could look at it a couple ways um, I'm not as familiar with J. Cole as <laughs> you are um, but I know for example um Drake. I've heard various Drake songs yeah. across. How many albums does Drake have? A lot. He's got like at least four, right? No, nah, I think more. Major than four. release. It's like, like at major least, release. At least four. At least four. At least four. Right? Least four, four, least four, four like, more. Yeah, yeah, four more. Um, so, and this has nothing to do with whether somebody likes Drake or doesn't like Drake. Mm -hmm. But one of the things I have found is that you can mix and match all those albums, and they'll all sound like they go together. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And that's kind of what you're getting at. Like, there's a sort of a singular sound yeah. across multiple albums. And I think that, uh, you know, if an artist or an entertainer, depending on who he is, I don't know. Yeah. Um, if a, if a person is into just one thing and that's what satisfies them, and they just I just love making this, whatever it is, mm -hmm. then have at it, man. You want to make ten albums of that? If that's if that's authentic to you, you know what I mean? Then yeah. cool, do your thing. But um, I think more often than not, that's usually not the case. Usually, the, usually, when somebody's doing just one thing, it's because uh, they're an they're an entertainer, and that's that's what they feel they're supposed to do. I, this is this is how I got big. This is what people are expecting me. I'm a funk creator. I'm yeah. a whatever. Um, We've had this 
We've had this debate in the studio where you take someone like, what he does is not what rappers do. So mm -hmm. if you take an, a rapper, right? If you take a lyricist, Jay-Z, he's been in the game. He's mastered the art of lyricism for 20 years. You would think 20 years later, he would think to himself when he gets into a studio, what can I do with my lyrics that I've never done before in the history of my career? You know, since I've mastered this art form, you know, what can I, how can I play with the words or put it on something that's never been rapped on before? to challenge himself. They yeah. don't want to challenge themselves. That, they have a formula that mm -hmm. works and makes money. They stick to the formula that makes money. You know what that, I mean? That's like, the thing. Like, he, he's not controlled yeah. by that. Zach. No, yeah. no one really wants to really do anything new because they're like, what if like, like, but like this day and they age. They don't want to rock the boat. They, yeah, they don't want to rock the money. boat. Yeah. Like right now, um, trap music is very big. And honestly, yeah. I, don't, I don't appreciate it. Lil Yachty and all them. Terrible. Yeah, thank you, Anthony. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I don't appreciate it. Like, it's like the, it's like um, mainstream, very mainstream. Like mm -hmm. the, It's like the, a trend. Yeah, it's like a trend, yeah. Like, the youth is exposed, like, to one thing, and it's been constant. Like, mm -hmm. someone has to do something different so that us, like, you know, I'm, I'm say kids, because I'm, I'm taking still a child, obviously, 17. Mm -hmm. But we have to be exposed to new things, because things that are, like, um, like right now, as trap music, since we're influenced by it, it's not a positive influence, in my opinion, because it's, like, so repetitive and it's so... Compare, like, c compare, like, the last Lil Yachty album to, like, the, the new Tribe album. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, the Midnight Marauders up, two completely different sounds, two com completely different sounds. Mm -hmm. But some people may not think that the, the Tribe album is good because they've been influenced by this new album that's been out by Lil Yachty, and they completely forget about everything else. Yeah, well, it sounds like what you're really getting at there is that people have a, uh, or some people end up having strong, uh, almost they almost get fundamental about whatever the genre that they're into mm -hmm. is. And so anything that doesn't fall into that is yeah. automatically bad. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You'll find that with, you know, maybe people who totally discount a whole genre. Like a lot of people, when I was growing up especially, it was like, oh, country's terrible, you know? Um, I'm into rock music, country's terrible, or I'm into hip hop, rock is terrible. Mm -hmm. or, or a lot of times I'm, you know, oh my God, I can't stand rap. Like you just wave off this whole genre um, because it doesn't comport to your particular preferences that you have yeah but um yeah ver variety is, is is good but i the only thing i would say is if you're if you're being if you're trying to be diverse and different just for the sake of being different i don't know that, that you will achieve what you're talking about mm -hmm. because at the end of the day it's about it's about authentic expression and so um like i said if 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 if, if drake really loves that sound, I assume he he must, right? Because mm -hmm. yeah, of course. You mix and match them all. Yeah, it's like one. It's like thing. one long, huge mega album. Yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. But you also had a formula that was commercially very successful with Mine Heist that a lot of people started to replicate in the market and wanted to do similar songs to Mine Heist. So you could have stuck with a Mine Heist formula for your future album. Yeah, and I'm saying and just I'm kept say making that. If I if I if, if after Mine Heist I was um, still compelled to pursue that world and I was like man I just I never, I never want to leave I never want to leave I want to stay here forever then all right if that's how I genuinely f if that would have been how I genuinely felt then so be it I suppose I could have just done that but that's not how I felt and I find it hard to believe that others in whatever genre or whatever they're doing I, I find it hard to believe that they would be content to stay in one spot the entire the entirety of their career like unless they're an entertainer and if that's what you're coming at then okay I get it it's a business it's a product you're not it's not really about art it's about moving units yeah. making money and and if so, that's where if that's how someone's coming out there's nothing wrong with that mm -hmm. that's your thing okay yeah. but there's a difference between that and artistry and um you know i think for most artists i would assume not everybody's the same so there could be exceptions to this but yeah. my inclination is that most artists would not be content to just do the same thing again and again and again yeah. and again at least i'm not so yeah, of course like yeah. your, all your albums could be different but um all right i think that's uh, all we can have for today that's all the time we have but we ran, um, we ran out of drive space we <laughs> Um, I thank you so much for coming to yeah, CP. Yeah, thank you for the invitation. Uh, you as well. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, that's CP Radio. Tune back next week. And that is that. Zach Kempsey, everyone. Say goodbye. Thanks, fellas. Thank you.